it would seem that there is some uh, good old backlash against uh, good old gamers, a company that had up till now a very, very good relationship with its consumer base. However, unfortunately, they decided to squander that away uh, in order to pander to the Chinese communists. You see, there is this game that probably a lot of people haven't even heard about. It's called Devotion. And Devotion is a horror game which uh, takes place in an apartment in Taiwan. And during that game, you get to encounter a meme directed to the <gasps> dictator of China. And because of that, it got review bombed on Steam. And now it seems that uh, good old game decided uh, not to have this game on their platform because allegedly gamers uh, were complaining. Uh, but in fact, it was communist activists from China that were complaining. And uh, we know how this goes because the Chinese have a point-based social media um, system where if you complain about games like this and trivial nonsense like this, you actually get rewarded, you get more points. And there are people within China that are doing these point huntings, uh, finding out whatever controversy uh, they can use in order to up their points. The effect, um, the quality of good old games, it does put into question the morality of this company. And I have to say that it is very sad the times we live in. Uh, and it is very sad that I think the United States are definitely losing the culture war between freedom and dictatorship, between freedom and control. Because after World War II, uh, there was a strong sentiment of freedom and the importance of liberty and human rights. And this was a torch that was carried by the West. And American companies, they were filled with patriotic American people that cared about these values. Even though there was no law forcing companies to care about these values, people simply cared about them because they were American and they believed in freedom. The freedom, in this case, to make a joke. Now it seems that uh, we have a generation of people that are absolutely greedy and the only thing they care about is money. There, there is no more principle, no more morality, uh, unless they can use the morality to make more money. Like claiming they care about some LGBT or transgender issue, uh, while at the same time doing businesses with Middle Eastern countries that do not care about these issues at all, uh, and only using these talking points in the West, but not using these talking points in the Middle East. And um, in this particular case, it's, it's kind of sad because the way it works, China is a... Uh, the way <clears throat> companies operate, and they can just use its central power to decide that this company, for example, Good Old Games, uh, isn't allowed to constantly maintain the good graces of the communists if they want to do business there. Which is why they're doing these things. It's, it's not because they care about what gamers think or they care about the consumer. No, they, they care about Chinese policy. America doesn't have anything remotely similar. Um, I, I mean, maybe it does in a way, like you, you have to somehow bow down to big tech and you know follow their terms of service and make sure you don't upset certain journalists. It's a lot more decentralized. But for example, if you make a joke about Donald Trump or you criticize the Republicans or anything like that, you can still make money in the United States. Hell, you, you can piss off every single Republican in the US and you can still make business there. But if you piss off someone high up at the Chinese Communist Party, you're done. So it's not a two-way street. You now have the Chinese just exporting their morality into the West. And the West cannot export anything back to China. Apparently, a recent news article claims that there are over 2 million, 2 million Chinese people within Western companies, big tech, government, um, private sector, journalism. Um, now, 
allegedly, like, we don't know if these people are infiltrators, spies, or anything similar, but, but it's a warning sign. Because how many Americans, how many, you know, liberty-loving people have infiltrated China? It's just a one-way street. It's not, it's not a two-way street. And there is a danger, of course, that when you have a country that is a dictatorship and that they constantly criticize democracy and they mock democracy and they try to subvert it, and that country is allowed to spread its influence to the free world, you are going to see some massive changes. And it's no wonder that here in the West we're moving towards the same social media point-based system like they have in China. Except it's not going to be the government that controls this point-based system. It's going to be unaccountable corporations. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter if the boot comes from the corporation, if the boot comes from organized religion, or if the boot comes from the government. The main issue is that the boot is coming. And unfortunately, right now, if you're in the United States and you're a CEO at a big company, if you want to make money, you should do business with China because it's a big market. It's a big market. While all the economies are shutting down and they're trying to protect people and they're quarantining and they're shutting businesses down. In China, business is like usual. Their economy is going to be booming in the future. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's really depressing. And the only thing that I'm glad to see is that there are a lot of gamers that are standing up to this. And uh, th there are two things that really are upsetting. The, the first one is that good old games is trying to use just these PR weasel word tactics saying, oh yeah, it's the gamers that are complaining when, when everyone knows what this is all about. I mean, here's the thing, right? If the gamers are complaining, why not just put the game up there and no one will buy it? I mean, clearly there's no market for it, right? Because the gamers are upset. Just put it on your platform. No one is going to buy it, right? That's, that's the narrative. But we know what, what, that that is not the case. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I expect that in the future, criticism against China is going to become less and less. Uh, I clearly noticed that there was a time, three to four years ago, when people were looking at the, from the press, they were looking at the Chinese social point system and they were looking how horrible it is and how authoritarian and draconic it is. And now not only are the same journalists not criticizing that system, but they're advocating that big tech applies it here. And they're fine with it. They're happy with it. In fact, they demand big tech does more in order to control every aspect of people's life. I mean, Sony recently announced that they are going to monitor voice conversations on their platform in order to make sure that people don't violate the TOS. Noble sentiment, absolutely. It's almost like it's coming from Jesus Christ himself. Why are people shocked on the fact that Sony is monitoring private conversations between users? Why are people happy with this? It's like the postal service opening people's envelopes. And you can say, well, yeah, but the post belongs to the government. Okay, fine. It's like, if you were to try to use a private delivery system, that they would just constantly open your packages and look to see what's inside. Like, isn't that like some sort of invasion of privacy? I know it's coming from a private company and they can do whatever it wants, but like, the morality of it, is, is it normal? Like, if you, let's say, uh, give your machine to a car wash, uh, are they allowed to just all of a sudden go into your car and look for everything to see if you have any contraband before they wash your car? Because if all the, the car washes in the country would do this, then you'd be forced to just subject yourself to that nonsense. So, you know, it's kind of weird. Like, people are more and more open to these draconic measures and putting up with them um, that it's a little bit heartwarming to see that gamers are standing up. And they're saying, no, this is absolutely ridiculous. And they stood up to Blizzard. They're standing up to good old games. Obviously, I don't know how much power gamers as a community have. Because the game journalists are definitely not the voice of the community. Uh, but, you know, some backlash. Just like someone just still carrying that torch that this is not okay and you shouldn't just bow down to authoritarian communists whenever they get offended for even like the smallest trivial things. Because like th this is not even a game that's mocking China viciously. You know? It's just like one joke in the game. Chill the fuck out.
but they don't want it because then it normalizes it and they don't want it to be normalized let me know what you think and uh, I'll, I'll be seeing you guys in the comment section